In this video, you're going to learn everything you need to know about parallel compression. This is one of my favorite techniques as a music producer, but also in my role as a professional mixing and mastering engineer. And in this video right here, I'm going to show you three ways that you can use parallel compression to make your mixes sound better than ever before. So let's jump right in. And in case you're new to the channel, I have a free gift for you. It's called the Finisher Framework, my three simple steps that you can use to finish at least one great sounding song per month. So if you struggle with finishing music consistently, this is exactly what you need. It will help you upgrade your workflow and make you a more efficient and effective music producer. Get it at pickyourself.com framework. The link is also below this video. Now let's get to this tutorial. So first of all, what is parallel compression and how is it different from normal compression in mixing and mastering? Let's look at this diagram that I've made for you. So here we have our original signal at the top. This has no effect inserted. It just goes 100% dry to the mix bus. And then we have a copy of our original signal running in parallel. So the signal is being split into the original chain and the parallel chain. And we have a compressor engaged on that parallel version of our original signal. And those dry percent and wet percent faders, they just show us there is the possibility to dial in the exact amount of how much of the original uneffected signal we want to have in our overall mix and how much of the wet signal, meaning the affected signal, the compressed signal, do we want to have in our mix. Now the big question is, why would you even want to do something like this? The big benefit of parallel compression is that it allows you to retain the integrity of the original signal. So the transients, the overall microdynamics in that original signal, something that you maybe love about it, but it still allows you to add in just the right type of flavor that you get from the compression. And this is especially beautiful if you have compressors with a certain color that you want to add in. You can be really extreme with the settings you use on the compressor because then you can dial in just the right amount and use only a little bit of that flavor. Let's now jump into our DAW and see some practical use cases of parallel compression in action. So I have this little loop here and we will use parallel compression to spice things up a little bit. So the first use case is the most basic one and we'll use it for the clap sound here. If you listen to the clap in solo, then you will notice that this just sounds a little bit thin. So something about this clap is really washed out and doesn't really cut through as much as I want it to. And this is a perfect use case for the most basic version of parallel compression. So we're going to use the basic Ableton compressor for this. And as you can see, you have this wet dry knob here. This is the most basic way of using parallel compression. You just insert it and use the wet dry knob. There are some benefits to this because it's really fast to do this, but also some downsides that I will talk about a little bit later. So we'll bring down the threshold. I will keep it 100% wet, so just as an insert effect, and we will dial in a setting that is too extreme for normal insert compression. So this is sounding quite nice already, but we're kind of losing a little bit of that tail from the clap. And this is exactly where parallel compression shines because we can now dial in just the right amount and get the best of both worlds, basically. It gets even more noticeable if I put this into peak mode here. Because this will let the compressor detect on the actual peak level instead of the RMS value. And so the compression becomes even more extreme. But now let's dial in a wet dry setting that makes sense. So this to me sounds much better. I get a little bit more of that extra snap that the compressor gives me, but still it feels like the original clap that I had and not something that is super destroyed. All right, so that was easy. Just using the wet dry knob, almost all new compressors have that. Why don't we always just do that? Well, glad you asked because there is a reason for that. If you now slap on another effect after this in the chain, you will always work with the compressed and the uncompressed signal. So here, of course, they are mixed together after this. You have a little bit of the dry and a little bit of the wet going on. And if you, let's say, add a little bit of reverb after that or 
whatever other defect, distortion and so on, it will always distort the dry and the wet combination that you dialed in here. There's no way to treat those individually. And sometimes treating them individually is the exact thing that you want to do. And this is what we're going to do in the next example. Let's head over to our bass sound. So this bass sounds interesting, but I would like to take things further and create a parallel chain that has compression on it, but then also works with this chain a little bit more to get even more of the sound that I want to achieve here. So as you can see, we have the uncompressed chain and the parallel compression chain. And right now there's nothing on there. I will just use the compressor, the parallel compressor and slap it here on the parallel compression chain. As you can see, we still have the dry here and the compressed here. And I will now keep this 100% wet because of course we have this already running in parallel. So there's no reason to do anything else. Now, this is a moment where you can do really extreme settings. So with the standard Ableton tools, this would mean you set the ratio to infinite to one, for example, really, really quick attack time, really long release time. And this would like literally destroy the signal if you do something like this destroy it in an interesting way. As you can notice, the compressor adds a little bit of grit and distortion to the sound, which is exactly what I want. If you don't use the Ableton tools and you have like a little bit of a bigger arsenal, you can also go crazy and use a compressor that has a certain flavor. For example, an 1176 style compressor. So this here is an emulation of the 1176, which is a really traditional compressor that is being used in a lot of analog style studios. It still serves a purpose because it has a really nice character. Now here, for example, you can dial in super extreme settings. I'm just gonna go for extreme ratios. This, by the way, has like a special function where you can activate all of these ratio settings and add them together. This is like a little super trick with this special compressor, which creates incredible distortion. Let's listen to this and I will just dial the settings in on the fly. So really nice. Okay, I have not gain staged this perfectly. I hope you forgive me on this video because here it's not about like what does the compression itself add. It's more like we want to add a little bit of flavor and I want to go with the flow and focus more on the flavor itself than like perfect gain staging here. By the way, check out my gain staging video in which I walk you through exactly how to do gain staging properly. But yeah, I hope you could listen to the nice distortion character that this adds here. The cool thing now is that we can build on this and take the chain further and only work on the affected compressed chain. So for example, I could add in a little bit of echo, just put that right after the purple audio. And yeah, here we use a little bit of web drive because I don't want 100% echo. And maybe I even want to say, okay, let's only compress a certain part of the frequency range and add that back in. So I could use an auto filter and bring this to the beginning of the chain. So even, even before the compressor and say, okay, I only wanna treat and compress the high end. So just the high end is being affected by the rest here of the chain. Now let's add this back in and listen to the bass in total. So this was the original bass. And this is with the added, distorted, compressed parallel chain. Now I'm gonna bring this down a little bit and just feed in as much as I like taste-wise. So 
as you can see, you can add in character and create a nice parallel chain that builds on compression. And this is the exact reason why sometimes the wet dry knob is not what you want to do. Now let's get to the pro level and talk about a even different setup of parallel compression here. And by the way, if you got any value out of this video so far, consider subscribing, consider liking this video. I ask for this because it motivates me to keep going with this channel and also gives you the chance to not miss out on any future videos that I put out. So as you can see, we have our drum tops group here. And if I want to parallel compress this, I could obviously just slap a compressor on the drum tops group and use the wet dry knob. I could also create an effects rack and then do different things with this. But all of this would send the same amount of parallel compression from all these individual channels into this drum tops channel. There's a different way of working with parallel compression and that is by using a send return channel. So I've created this return channel here and we can slap a compressor on this. Let's say we use the glue compressor by Ableton, 100% wet because this is just a parallel chain. And now we can send different parts, different amounts of signal into this compressor. So let's say we want this glue compressor that now sits on the return channel. Let's say we want this to react mainly to the clap and the percussion sounds and just a little bit to that hi-hat. So it's being affected mainly by these parts of the signal. So we can absolutely do this. Let's take a look. And then obviously you can decide to feed in a certain amount of that signal. Without. And so you get the idea, all of this helps me create the exact perfect blend of compressed and uncompressed materials. Don't be too strict with gain staging in this exact setup. Like I said, check out the gain staging video, it should be somewhere over here. And yeah, I hope you got something out of this video. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment below. I really read all of your comments and I reply to most of them. If you have any follow-up questions, just hit me up and I will see you in the next video.